our hymnal to number 281 together. 281, we have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let's all stand together. As we sing that verse together. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus Welcome to the morning services here at Bible Baptist Church. Looking forward to a great, great morning God has for us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing us here together. God, we thank you for your precious word that is central to the uh, function here of the church. Lord, I thank you for um, every individual. You know who's here. You know who needs to be here, Lord, and you know who there's... Those who uh, desire to be here but can't for various reasons, Lord, I pray that uh, you would just uh, bless the service tonight, uh, this morning. Lord, bless Brother uh, Moreland as he um, is even in his heart. Uh, you're working in him to uh, give us exactly what we need from your word. Lord, I thank you and praise you for what you're doing here in this place. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Sometimes are here filling men's heart with fear. Freedom we all hold dear. Now is at stake. Humbling your heart to God, saving from chasing rock. Take the way pilgrims trod. Christians away. Jesus has come. Many will meet their doom. Trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the sky. Going where no one dies. Heavenward bound. Love of so many cold. Losing their homes of gold. This and God's word is about. When the signs come to pass, clearing from sin at last, it will come very fast. Trumpets will sound. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their new trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the sky, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Troubles will soon be o'er, happy forevermore, when we meet on that shore, free from all care. Rising up in the sky, telling this world goodbye. Homeward we then will fly, glory to share. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will make. 
page over if you would 283 283 I have found his grace is all complete he supplieth every need let's sing that first together I have found his grace is all complete he supplieth every need while I sit and learn at Jesus feet I am free as free indeed it is joy unspeakable and cold I have found the joy no tongue can tell How its waves of glory roll It is like a great or flowing love Bringing up within my soul It is joy unspeakable and full of glory Full of glory, full of glory It is joy unspeakable and full of glory Oh, the half has never Fantastic singing this morning. If you have a uh, bulletin, if you'd take it, uh, and uh, we'll look at a few things. Um, many are out this uh, morning, a lot of sickness going around, and uh, pastor being one of them. And so uh, if you would, uh, be praying for him and all the rest who are out sick. If you notice someone not here, probably is they're sick. Or um, there's a few still out of town from the holidays, and um, we wish them a safe travels uh, back home, but uh, we have an exciting week ahead of us. Um, Wednesday, of course, we'll have our uh, Wednesday night uh, Bible study and uh, prayer. We are a missionary letter that day, and then um, Thursday, 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, you want to be here. It's our New Year's Eve service. Uh, it's not really a service. It's a New Year's Eve gathering. Uh, we just have a great time. It's just a fun uh, time to get together. It's not a kumbaya kind of service, uh, no candlelight vigil or anything like that. It's just, it's just a really fun time that you can come on New Year's Eve and remember about it the next day. And so uh, we hope you come. Uh, we'll end at midnight with uh, prayer, and uh, we just kind of circle around the auditorium. The circle keeps getting larger and larger each year, and it's uh, pretty exciting in that way. But um, uh, we also... Uh, do the uh, reveal the theme for uh, 2016, uh, hand out the calendars and the uh, directories and um, all that. We have a uh, special component this year, though. We're going to have a talent contest. Hopefully, we're going to have a talent contest. Only two people have signed up thus far. I know there's more talent than that here at Bible Baptist Church. <clears throat> Whether you consider it a talent or not, that's okay. Uh, feel free to sign up and um, uh, show us what you got, all right? And um, there'll be a couple uh, special things um, that are not uh, going to be put on there that uh, will happen. Uh, if, if you don't come for anything else, come for Brother Jarvis's uh, ski story. It's part two. He gave, it to, he gave us part one a few years back um, at the New Year's Eve gathering. And if you, if you know Brother Jarvis at all and know uh, how good of a storyteller he is, you'll want to be here for part two. All right? So he'll, he'll be giving that... Uh, uh, sometime throughout the evening, but uh, just uh, sign up, uh, bring some uh, finger foods to share, and uh, we'll really uh, enjoy that time um, that evening. We also do a year in review, so we'll have pictures, a slideshow that uh, Pastor will walk through um, those uh, 
the uh, pictures and kind of see what we what we did throughout the year. Also, um, another announcement, if we, uh, if you would, on the uh, back table, or on the table downstairs, there'll be uh, offering envelopes. They'll have your name on them. And uh, for 2016, make sure and pick those up on your way out so you can, uh, uh, next, uh, next Sunday is uh, the next, the first Sunday of 2016, so you want to have those uh, envelopes available to you. So we have those downstairs. Uh, pick them up on your way out, if you would. And, um, January 9th is our annual workers dinner. This is for all of those who um, either uh, are involved in a ministry at the church or want to be involved in a ministry at the church. Uh, We encourage you to come. If uh, you don't have anything that you're doing right now, but you want to be able to uh, get plugged in somewhere, uh, there's a lot of opportunities here at Bible Baptist Church. And uh, so come to the workers dinner and you can uh, find out where the holes are that we can uh, uh, plug. And uh, we just... uh, it's just an encouraging evening. Uh, that'll be on the 9th of January at 5 p.m. That'll be right here um, at the church. And um, in the fellowship hall is where we'll begin uh, with dinner. And then we'll come in here uh, uh, right after dinner for a short time. Um, there is a sign-up sheet down at the bottom of the, uh, in the hallway as well for that. If you'd sign up for that, that would be great. Um, and uh, coming in January, we do have a ladies' night out and the men's breakfast. Amen. And so um, that's uh, coming up as well. Let's take a moment to welcome any guests we have. We, uh, I know we have a lot out this morning, but uh, I believe we have a couple guests. If you, uh, this is the first time you've been here to Bible Baptist Church, or maybe the first time in a long time. If you'd uh, honor us by uh, uh, standing or at least waving your hand, we can, we can notice you. Has everybody been here before? Yeah, okay. Once before? Okay. Okay, your mother's fiance. Okay, very good. All right, great to have you. Great to have you again. Thanks so much for coming. All right, at this time, we'll have the choir sing.
Amen. Well, number 285 in your hymnal, 285. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Let's sing that last, uh, the first together. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Let's have the children uh, be dismissed for junior church, and we'll sing that last together. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have blessed be my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. 542, let's uh, turn over to 542. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. When you find that, if you stand with me, if you would, 542. On that first, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the Savior. trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Amen. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guest. We'll come back and sing that last together.
Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus Just from sin and self to cease Just from Jesus simply taking Life and rest and joy and peace Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him How I prove Him more and more Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust Him more Let's sing that last all together as you find your seats I'm so glad I learned to trust Thee Precious Jesus, Savior, friend, on that last together. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more. Amen. You may be seated. As the ushers come, we'll take the offering this morning. Let's finish the, finish the year out strong. Amen. Amen. We're just a little bit under on our faith promise right now. If we can uh, end the year on an even mark, that would be awesome. Amen. Amen. All right. Brother Paul Abel? Would you ask the Lord to bless you out? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that you've given us where we come in and hear the word of God preached, and we pray that you'd be with the, our brother that brings the message, that you'll be with him and that you'll bless him, and that we'll be able to use the message in our lives, and we ask that you'd uh, help us to be cheerful givers and give back a portion that you've blessed us with, and then we pray that you'd uh, help us to spend it wisely, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, <clears throat> it's been great to have Amy and Steve. Uh, 
glad she could bring Steve along. No, uh, <laughs> Steve and Amy are here, um, and and uh, children for the holidays, and uh, so Amy was able to step in. Uh, Lisa's out with the boys sick, and so we really do appreciate that. Uh, yes. We're really grateful um, for that. So thank you so much, Amy. upheld by his hand we believe though the earth be removed and time be no more these truths are secure God's word shall endure whatever the change these things are sure we So if the mountains are cast down into the plain, when kingdoms all crumble, this one remains. Our faith is not subject to season of men. With our fathers we proclaim, we believe the Lord will come, as he said. The land and the sea will give up their dead. His children will reign with him as their head. We Good morning. If you'll turn into your Bibles and to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 34, and we'll be also looking in Joshua chapter 1 for our text. Deuteronomy 
34. If you'll stand in honor of reading of the, God's Word, <coughs> we'll start in Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 5. So Moses, a servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab over against Bethpur. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. And Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eyes was not dim, nor his natural force abated. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of, of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. And all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh, and to all his servants, and to all his land. And in all that mighty hand, and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of Israel. Now to Joshua chapter 1. Now after the death of Moses, a servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today, Lord. We thank you for a chance that we can come into your house, that we can worship you, that we can read your word. Lord, I just ask that you'll open up our hearts, our minds, our eyes and ears to receive your word, Lord, so we can be fruitful unto you. Lord, if there's one here today that has not accepted you as Christ, as their Savior, Lord, I ask that today will be the day of their new birth. And Lord, that we can end this uh, year and begin a new one in a new way. That we can be strong soldiers for you. Lord, we look so forward to your coming. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. <coughs> I ask that you'll pray for those that are out sick and those that are out traveling. I'm glad to see that everybody made it through the Christmas holiday. Everybody's doing well. Glad to see some smiling faces. Is everybody smiling today? I know I'm still having a problem, but I, I, it's hard to tell when you're with family. You know, so I'm glad that we're all here together as a family and uh, just enjoying each other. Today I want to I want to prepare for the new year coming, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of excited about the new year. Um, the one thing I'm not excited about is seeing all the election commercials coming on for a whole year. But it'll be all right. God will get us through it, and it could be a lot worse. That's a good way to turn off your TV so we don't have to watch all that stuff. Amen? So, I want us to look here in Joshua chapter 1. In verse 2 is our uh, text for this morning. It says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise... Go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. <clears throat> Joshua was a, was a remarkable man. I think he was. I, I, I love, um, first of all, in the, in the stories of Exodus and Deuteronomy and Leviticus, through this time of Israel, was, one of my favorite characters was Caleb. But Caleb also had a man that, you know, that he could team up with, and I believe that was Joshua. Joshua was first seen back in Exodus um, chapter 17. And Joshua and Caleb were one of the many spies that went into the land and came out. And Joshua and Caleb actually stood up for Christ, or for God. When all of Israel was against him, these guys stood up for him. Joshua was a general in the army. Um, kind of like the head of the army, so he had a military mindset. He knew how to fight. He was a strong man. But yet he was not the, the leader of the nation. It was Moses that God appointed for that. And uh, leading an army wasn't a new thing for him, but leading a nation was. <coughs> I 
excuse me. And as we see that Moses passed away, and God looks at him and says, Therefore, now therefore, arise and go. So we're going to look at that small phrase there. It says, now therefore arise, go today. Joshua had one thing that only a few men running a nation ever had. And that was God leading him and God on his side. A lot of men that have been running nations and kings and queens and so forth can't say that they actually had God on their side. They might have been appointed that through God, but God was leading Joshua and the uh, and Israel into that promised land. So God made sure to let Joshua know that he was with him and was going to prepare the way for him to go into the land of Canaan. <clears throat> Can I ask this before we get started? Do you know that God is with you in preparing the way for you? As we look at this passage, I want, to, I want you to put your, tie your feet in, in Joshua's shoes for a little bit. Okay, it's not going to be an easy thing to do because of the, the time period, the culture, the things that they went through. But really, it's not too far from where we are. So how do we, how do we prepare to arise and go? How do we prepare to keep marching? How do we prepare to do what the Lord wants us to do? We talk about surrendering to the Lord. We talk about keep marching forward. But how do we do that in the life and the culture and the world that we live in today. So number one, if you look at this, it kind of has your past, present, and future all right here. Let's look at the word therefore. Therefore. Why is it therefore? Well, let's go back to the back and, and just to the sentence right before it. And to that passage there in, even in Deuteronomy. Therefore, it says, my servant Moses is dead. Therefore, okay, God is looking at Joshua and saying, Joshua, it's, it, it's time to get up. Moses is dead. Now we read here in Deuteronomy that they wept because Moses was gone. We, as, we, we today cannot keep on looking at the past to move forward. How many of us actually drive down the road in reverse? You're only going to be able to do it for a short while before you hit something. You cannot see the whole path. You can only see what's in that mirror. Unless you double join it and you can actually turn around and sit like that. <clears throat> but still, you're only going to be able to do it so, for so long. God does not want us to keep looking into the past for us to move forward. Satan does. How many in here today would say that they have something in their life that they wish they could change? We all do. Every single one of us do. I thank God for His love and mercy and grace that is shed upon us. Because we don't have to live in that past. It's gone. We do not need to dwell in the past and have it to continue to drive us down the road. That's not what the past is there for. It was, we have to understand that it was a time for Israel to leave the wilderness to leave Moses behind and move on. So many times do we just, we stay and, and we have things in the past bother us and we dwell on that. We cannot continue to keep dwelling. Especially as this new year is coming on and, and um, we get a, we, uh, Lord willing, we'll get a new president and um, things will start happening, but it's the Lord who's driving us forward. It is the Lord that leads our way, and we have to stop looking back because God's no longer in the back as He is in the front. The whole time as He was leading Israel, a cloud by day and what by night? Fire, so they could see ahead. He didn't put it behind them. He was moving them forward. Let me ask this. Is sin holding you back from moving forward with God? Is the past driving you instead of God leading you? Israel was continually looking back to Egypt. Were they not? They blamed God for certain things. They blamed Moses. They blamed Aaron. They blamed everybody except for themselves. 
And then they wanted to go back to Egypt because, man, we, we had it so much better in Egypt. We could eat, we could drink, we had all these things, and you brought us out here in the wilderness to die. And God said, no, that's not why I brought you here. You sinned against me, and that's why you're here where you are now. But I have promised you a promised land with milk and honey. What gets exciting is as, as you read through chapter 1 and chapter 2 is Joshua is that once they get into the promised land, they no longer have to eat manna every day. They get to eat of the fruit of the land which God gave them. Are you eating of the fruit that the Lord gave you? Man, I, mean, I, I, I tell you what, I'm excited for the Lord coming. I am. How many of you are? You look it. Good, all four of us are excited. It's the, with the new year coming, we can't look back on 2015 or 14 or go back 20 years. We have to, we, we have to look at this new year as, as moving forward and making a change in our lives. What do they call it? Um, a New Year's resolution. Is it resolution? Am I saying that right? just didn't sound right for some reason. How many of you make one of those? I want to change. I want to do this. I want to do that. <laughs> Nobody. You got liars. You're all in church. <laughs> yes, you do. We all do. New Year's, we're going to start this. You know why we start on New Year's? Because we eat all the fudge and cookies and everything during the rest of the last month. That's why I start Christmas back in November 1st. <laughs> and then I run all the way through like January 7th. You know, Janu I think in January 6th is when Russia... Uh, celebrates their Christmas. So, hey, I celebrate both. Let's go. Let's just have a great time. I just don't go out and buy everything twice. Woo! But we don't want to look back and dwell there. Your past is there to, it, it's there to teach you. God's given you certain things that you can hold on from the past to teach you to move forward. I know when I was playing football in high school, I don't want to go back to two-a-days. I've learned quite a bit on those two-a-day practices. How not to play football anymore. You know, I want, you have to learn to, to prosper. You don't want to stay playing peewee football the rest of your life. You actually want to grow up and play something else. You're military. You don't want to go and be in boot camp for the rest of your life. You actually want to get out and do something and, and be a soldier. Do that. As a Christian, don't keep on being a baby Christian the rest of your life. Start eating of the meat. Start eating of the bread. Don't stay on just milk the rest of your life. But drink of the fruit that God's given us. It's time to move on. And that's why God was telling Joshua, Therefore, arise, get up, go. Quit dwelling on the past. Israel's weeping. I, I don't have time for this, guys. we got to get into the land of Canaan. There's things going to be happening. So let me ask you, where are you at? Are you still dwelling in the past? Now let's look at this next word. Arise. Arise. That's a word that's not so easy for me in the morning. I don't know about you guys. I like to just lay there for a little bit and try to get all those cobwebs out of my head. I have a lot of little cobwebs waking up. I don't know where those little spiders come from, but they do. So number one, we look on the past to learn. Number two, we're going to look on the present to prepare. One thing we have to remember about today, that tomorrow is going to be yesterday and it's in the past. Okay, tomorrow's a brand new day. This morning was a brand new morning God's given us. It says, therefore, arise. Arise is something God's telling them to do right now. Get up. You know what? It's hard to move for the Lord when you're sitting there, it's hard to move for the Lord when you're comfortable. I love being uncomfortable. I don't like being in pain. I don't like to have my toes stepped on. I got ugly toes anyway. Why would I want them to step on that? You know, it's... God doesn't want us to stay where we are. He wants to move forward for Him. For us to have a strong relationship with God and to continue to have that strong relationship with God, we're going to have to move. We're going to have to continue to walk forward with Him. One thing I, I, I love to, to do is, and um, I'm sure my wife is watching on live stream, because uh, they're homesick this morning too with the same stuff that everybody else has. 
But one of the things I love to do is we, we was able to take a little bit of time together just a couple weeks ago and go to Easton Mall and just walk around, look at the Christmas lights, have a little cup of coffee. We got a little bit, of, uh, we, we even shared a sandwich together. Uh, I, I, a guy's always like, I'd rather just have my own hamburger. But looking at a hamburger, I mean, it was a big hamburger too. It was, it was great. So we cut it in half and shared that and the fries, and then we went and got some coffee later. And, but we was able to hold hands walking through the east end together. You know, yeah, yeah, aww, yeah. And, um, but it's, if we stayed at home with our children all the time and stayed in that little bundle, we're not going to have too much honey hubby time, are we? No, I want to go out to those places and, and you know, hold her hand and share a meal with her and just get to talk and spend some time with her. That's what the Lord wants from us, is to be able to get some alone time with Him and move with Him and talk with Him. We're not going to be able to get that every time where we're comfortable. We have to be able to get away. He says, arise. God has given us an order to be ready to lead us into His will. He was telling Joshua, uh, uh, the leader of their army, that get up, arise, get ready. If anybody knew this, Joshua knew how to do that, as to how, how to prepare. Are you preparing to be in the Lord's will? Are you preparing for this next year? There's a lot of us that are not even prepared for this evening. Man, I just take minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, honey, whatever it takes. There are times where I just got to take it day by day. Because the stress of this world will get down, but God's saying, arise, get ready, prepare. Because the things that you're about ready to do, you're going to have to be that leader. Joshua was a leader, but he wasn't a leader of a, a, a nation. But he was Moses, one of Moses' right-hand men. You know, God has a specific place and will for your, for your life, for all of our lives. So now is the time to arise and prepare to go. We cannot go anywhere just sitting on our rears. You say, well, I go all the time driving in a car, but you're moving. But you've got to get out of that car and get something done. Life isn't a drive through And we need to stand up and prepare and stand up for the Lord like Joshua did. As we, as we get down through here, we're going to go through some different things that Joshua, God was probably trying to prepare Joshua for. And our job isn't to get up and when God says arise and get up, our, our job's not to sit there and, and look at God and say, where? Where am I going? What's up? What am I preparing for? No, he says just, just get ready. Our job is not to question God or where we're going. Our job is to go where he's leading. That is so hard for a lot of us to do, isn't it? Because we want to know exactly everything that's in place. What's going on? How this is going to work? Who am I going to run into? How... We don't know. And you know what? You don't know and you made it this far. How many of you thought you'd be where you are today when you graduated high school? Nobody? How did you make it this far? It's through God. God leading you. I had my whole life planned out when I graduated high school. <laughs> yeah, really. Look at me. I started studying architecture in high school. Went to a vocational school, started learning that, started getting college credits between my junior and senior year, going to college and starting to prepare for that. And I wanted, I actually wanted to build churches. Draw them up and the architecture. And I didn't think I'd be building churches this way. This, had, this is nowhere near anything I ever dreamt of. And then I got into firefighting. And I was like, wow, okay, I can do this. I love this job. I am so glad I got out of that into where God has led me now. Do you realize when God tells you to rise and to go somewhere that you have to be ready to move? You have to be willing to go? You've made it here this far. Why are you worried about anything else? Isn't that silly? So he says, therefore, we don't need to be looking at our past. He says, arise. We need to... We need to be ready right here in the present, preparing to go. 
then we need to look at the future to succeed. I want to have success in my life. How many of you, when you when, are preparing to die? I kind of am. Because I'm trying to get things in order and this and that. If anything happens to me on the field, I want our ministry to keep going. And I also want, you know, when I'm laying there at the coffin, you know, laying there in the coffin, I want, I want people to say something about me that's good. I'll just sit there and go, look at the big fat guy laying down. There he is again. You know, no, I want him to say, you know, that was, he was a faithful man. He loved the Lord. He loved his family. He loved God. You know, and, and when I'm gone, I'm gone. I'm not going to return. I don't want to return. You know, and, and it's kind of, it, it kind of boggles my mind how we, we look at our lives and then we pray for somebody not to pass away. You know, if they're saved, we should ask them to go peacefully. The Lord will take them peacefully because they'll be a lot happier there than they are here. But that's not built into us to think like that. We look at life totally different than what God does. The God says go. Notice that arise and go are action words. They are commands. God didn't say, hey, do you mind standing up for a second? When you get a chance, could you get some things prepared? God told him, arise. In fact, two words before that was now. Now, therefore, get over yourself, get up, and go. We don't like commands, do we? We like to make choices. How many times has God told you to go somewhere, and you look and you question Him? Do you really want me to go there? Isn't it surprising, though, when you actually do obey Him, and and you go where he tells you to go, and something's happened, that's great. And you know that God's done it, and you're like, I don't know how you did it. That is awesome. How many of you have had that moment? I have, oh great, three of us, four of us, great. You guys are a sad group of people this morning. <laughs> you're like, I'm still on Christmas Day, and still trying to get the cobwebs out. Did you guys have a good Christmas, or was it a bad one? Everybody's been kind of sour this Christmas, even in the stores. You guys drink too much eggnog or something, man. That's bad stuff. So with the new year starting, we need, to, we need to stand up. We need to prepare to go. I don't want to look back on 2015. A lot of things have happened. A pastor brought it to my mind. He was talking to me. He goes, Ron, do you realize how much has happened in this year, 2015, with your ministry? I just kind of stood there and looked at him, like I always do and he's telling me everything that's happened with our ministry. And I'm like, you know, you're right. A lot can happen within a year. You get 365 days a year. And God, every four years, God gives you an extra day. That's not an extra day to sit there. Extra day to get something done. So we got to get ready to go. Maybe some of you are going, but where do I go? What do I do? How do I prepare to go? First thing that we need to do is that we need to see who God is and then see who we are. We are not who we think we are. Men, we are not big, strong, hard-headed people like we think we are. Women, you are hard... No, you're not hard-headed people like that either. You know what we are? We're sinners. Who needs a Savior? I am not perfect. You are not perfect. This is not a perfect church. This is a perfect church where God has laid us for us because we need the teaching of pastor. We need to love the pastor. We need the love of each other. Right here is where we need to start. And then we need to see who we really are. I'm a sinner. I've lied. I'm stopping right there. You don't need to know everything else. God knows. But I got it right with God. Have you got it right with God? Are you a sinner? Yes, you are. Every one of us has lied. Every one of us has done something wrong. And over and over and over again. I wore my dad's belt out. I did. He had to go buy himself a new belt every week. 
We need to surrender to God. Surrendering to God means we don't play 20 questions. We love to play 20 questions in the car to our family as we're, as we're traveling down the road. Well, they do. I don't. I'm like, whatever. Some, but they, my kids love to play 20 questions, especially with animals. So they'll think of the weirdest animal out there, and then everybody has to try to figure out what it is. By the 10th question, I'm about ready to freak out and pull over the side of the car and walk. <coughs> but our job is not to sit there and question God on every step of the way. Surrendering means surrender. Surrender everything. Your worries. Your health. There's a, th- there's a problem I've been trying to get a hold of for last couple months is my health. You know what? I've had to learn to surrender that. How many times have you heard me preach? And other churches have heard me preach. Hey, you know, with your health and this, that, that's a, a gift really from God that you're having these difficulties and he's preparing you for something else. You have to live what you preach. You know, and one of the things that I found out at this eye doctor on Wednesday, you know, they just came out and said, you know, she, I like how she did it, because I think she could just tell my personality, but she goes, you got glaucoma 100%. And I'm like, okay, thanks. And, and they said, but it's okay, we're going to do this and that. And I said, you know what, I'm not really worried about it. And they thought I was kind of lying. And I said, listen, a lot of people out there have it a lot worse than I do. I can still see. You're just going to try to stop it from getting any worse. I understand what, you know, the procedures, all this and that. I still have to go in some more testing, but, you know, it, I still had to take that time alone with God and just ask him some things. And it wasn't why. It was how do I deal with this now and get led. And I think so many of us with our health problems and different things going on in our lives, some of us have had problems with cancer, with our heart, um, Bob, when, when, when did you have your heart surgery? How long ago was that? It's been, what, four years? Yeah. Um, for, and you're doing great now, aren't you? I saw him running up and down the road from Johnny John's all the, you know, about four times a day. And um, he's Jimmy John's. Jimmy John's, isn't it? Johnny John's. <laughs> he goes through the John, too. Um, but it's, uh, we all have certain things that we've got to work through, but we need that time. But that doesn't mean that we just stop and we dwell on those things, it means that we got to keep on going. And Bob, I've seen that in your life. You haven't, let, you haven't let that stop you at all. You had to take it slower for a little while, and then you've kept on going. Diana, Diana's had some things going on with her. Mary Lou, you too. Oh, and you guys still come. You still do things. You guys are here all the time doing things. There is no excuse for us. And, you know, just lately, these guys are my heroes. We really are. How do we keep on moving? You don't dwell on it. You surrender it to God. And that means surrendering also your money, your family. That's a hard one, to surrender your money. But God will actually give you more fruit. And and prosper in the Bible is not prosper like, um, hey, I'm going to give you riches. Prosper is prospering spiritually. And I think God's done that with many of us here today. I have seen so many of you growing in the Lord. It's unbelievable from when I first started here. And I think you guys have seen me grow in the Lord and grow out. It's just one of those things. (laughs) It's the holidays, I swear. I'm allergic to that food. But notice here, three times, three times, and this is going to be your homework, three times in chapter 1, God tells Joshua to be strong and of good courage. Why? Why do you think he was telling a soldier, a general, to be strong and good courage? I'm guessing he was strong. He was a soldier. I'm guessing he was brave and he was courageous because of things that he's done. A weakling would not be a spy and go into a land knowing that he could be killed. So he had courage. But why did God tell him that? Three times in one chapter. Let's step back and look at Joshua for a minute. Joshua was one of the spies. He went in and he comes out and he has, what, almost three million people 
looking at him and telling him he's wrong, that they weren't going to follow him and Caleb and Moses Aaron into the promised land because of the giants, because of the obstacle, because of the things they saw. Joshua is also 40 years older and still strong as an ox. So was Caleb. Like I said, Joshua was a, was a military leader. He's never led a nation before. And the things he was about ready to do is to, of destroy cities, people, families, livestock, even, even their, um, the, the whole cities and everything within it, the, the money, the gold, everything, to destroy all that can take a toll on somebody's life. Their mental, their spiritual issues within that. He's telling him to be strong in following God. Where I'm about ready to lead you, you don't know. There's going to be difficulties in your life. However, if you do exactly what I say and have faith in me, it'll be okay. And you're going to live through it. And you're going to prosper. You're going to have a life. You're going to go into that promised land. But he had to continue to tell that to Joshua three times. I'm guessing Joshua was maybe kind of doubting himself. Wasn't really doubting God, but kind of doubting himself. I've done that. I think we've all done that. The Lord's getting ready to tell us to go out and do something, and we're like, I don't know if I can do that. Moses did the same thing. And now Joshua's kind of, I'm, I'm guessing that's what it is. Everybody has their own commentary on that. That's mine. Is, and he lived a life of coming out there and saying, we can do this. We can stand up for God. We can, if God's told us we can do it, we can do it. And all of Israel said, no. No, we can't. We're not going to. And Joshua and Caleb were just as much punished as the rest of the tribe was because they had to spend in the wilderness 40 years also. They've had to suffer too because of people's sin. But God says, I don't want you to dwell on that past. I don't want you to worry about what Israel thinks. I just want you to do what I tell you to do and then they'll follow. And in just the first couple chapters of Joshua, you'll see just some of the burden and, and some of the trials he had. You know, I think we've all been in Joshua's shoes at one point in time in our lives, don't you? God's preparing us for something, and I'm like, I, I don't know if I can do this. He goes, you're right, you can, but I can. That's why he's a great I am. I'm not able to learn a, a foreign language. God says, I am. I'm not able to go minister to those Muslims. God says, I am. I'm not able to go and, and go down the street and knock on that door. He says, I am. I'm not able to go into that prison and work with all those prisoners down there. Those are bad people. They're in prison for a reason. God says, I am. He wants to use us. He wants to have a relationship with us. He says, now therefore, arise and go. And then he goes on to continue. and says, go. Look at this. In verse 3, he tells them to go into the land, and goes, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses. He says, every place you step, I've already taken it for you. I'm giving it to you. Joshua, you've got to have faith. Joshua, you've got to have courage. You've got to be obedient. You've got to do exactly what I tell you to do, and it will be all right. Are you faithful today? Are you being obedient to God's word? Are you doing exactly what God has told you to do? Listen, maybe you're here today and you say, I, I know Jesus, or I believe in God. Well, believing in God and accepting God is two different things. There's a lot of people that believe in God. They say even atheists believe in God and foxholes. Listen, if you want a new life, you're tired of being drug around in the mud, in that miry clay, it's time to arise. Maybe you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Man, it's time to arise. It's time to get up. 
and say, you know what? I need you. Because what you did on that cross for me, I'm tired of living in the mud, in the miry clay, sitting on my duff, and nothing getting done. I'm tired of seeing everybody else getting things done, and I get to sit there. I don't want to be a fan. I don't want to be a fan sitting in the stadium and cheering, cheering on the team and trying to be the armchair quarterback. Like Pastor said a couple weeks ago about the second mile Christian. I want to be that second mile Christian. I want to be the player on the field that's getting dirty and getting the job done. I want to be the soldier that's out there on the war field getting the job done. Now it says, therefore, go and arise. Arise and go. To be one that is following God takes strength and good courage. It is not... It is, to follow God it doesn't, is not for the weak. It is for the strong. You start off weak, but you build up. The Lord will disciple you and help you. And that's why we have a church family. That's why we're here today is to strengthen each other. So let me ask you this. Are you looking on the past to drive you? I hope not. Are you preparing and willing to follow God now at the present time? Now is the time you've got to make your decision. Now is the time that you make that change. And are you ready to go where God leads you? Today is the day. Are you ready to go wherever God leads you? Some of you say it. Don't be saying it. Don't be preaching it unless you mean it. Because some of the places where God's going to lead you is going to be tough. But it'll be a blessing. Teenagers. <laughs> I love the teenagers of this church. I know they probably don't care about me as much. I'm rough on them sometimes, but I love them. And they can take it. That's the best thing is that they take it, they come in here, and they keep on getting better. Well, any teenagers, let me tell you something. You're going to have to start making a change in your life and getting some decisions right. It's not about what the world thinks, what the world tells you is good. You know what? How the world tells you this and that. It's what God tells you. That's the life to live. I used to say it my whole life is just to say it, but I never walked it. I talked it, but I never walked it. It's different when you, when you preach it and you've got to live it. And it's tough. But I wouldn't turn back now. God's opening the blinds a little bit every time to the promised land. Turn to Acts chapter, um, um, Acts chapter 1 real quick. That's in the New Testament. For pastor, if you're watching, that's in the New Testament. <laughs> he deserves that. Getting on me all the time. Now he can't say nothing. I'll get that text later. <laughs> Acts chapter 1, verse 8. I want you guys to look at this for a second. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, say it with me, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost no, no, you guys got it all wrong. That's not what it said. Say it again. Let's just start there. Both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the most uttermost you guys did it again. Part. There is no S on there. It's singular. That's like us going to Kroger's. I went to J.C. Penney's. We put plural on a lot of things, don't we? And we've done this for years. Bruce Martin brought this, a doctor we're working with, brought this to my attention. And I've read it and kind of went through that before. <coughs> That's singular. And he goes, okay, where's this uttermost part of the earth? Who's a people group? What language is it? Where's it at? 
And I said, you know what? When you look at a square map on a wall, it has endings, right? You can't go any farther off the map than where it stops. Either way, north, south, east, or west. But we have to look at it in God's eyes. The earth is really round, isn't it? And once you start somewhere and you start walking, it never stops. And God made that singular. And who's he talking to? Apostles. But when I read that Bible, that Bible talks to me. He's saying, Ron, where's your uttermost part of the earth? I can't hit parts of the earth. But I can hit a part. And my part's not the same as yours, Scotty. My part's not the same as Brother Barham. So let me ask you, where's your most uttermost part of the earth? Where has God shown you to do? Isn't that exciting that God has given you some place to go, something to do? And then we sit there and go, we don't have nothing to do in church. <laughs> Man, our church has something going on all the time. We have ministries January 9th. Am I right on that? It's our workers' dinner. Get in here and bring something good to eat. <laughs> but we're going to have time where you can get any kind of ministry here within the church. Let me tell you, our ministry, 1040, we need help. It's just doing research, making a phone call, doing this or that. We could use the help. I know Brother Yoder and I can both use the help. And our ministry keeps on growing. The bus ministry needs help. Who works on the bus ministry? They need help. Look at them. Those poor kids. Getting up a Sunday morning, have to look at those two. God bless them. You know what? They've given their lives for that bus, and they've done a great job with that. Are you ministry? I'm sure they could use a help. Choir, they can use help. Sunday school, they can use help. Junior church, I know they can use help. Get out there and preach, teach, do something. Now, therefore, rise and go. Next Sunday will be 2016. Next Sunday. The high State game will be over. There's no excuses. You will be in here. Pray about what God can do and how God can use you. Will you? Pray and say, you know what? Have I been sent here or am I ready to do what the Lord wants? It's exciting to see how, what the Lord's doing within this church. And uh, I love living down in Texas because when we came back here, something was always going on, a new face and a new ministry. Pastor's always got something going on. I know pastor can use a lot of help in ministry. We can't, we can't just keep on asking pastor to do everything. He needs us to help him. All right, let's pray. Everybody stand. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing us here together today, Lord. Lord, it's not easy to, and you know it's not easy for us to live in the nation where we are and seeing everything fall apart around us. Because they've taken you out of our schools. You've taken, they've taken you out of the courthouses. They've taken you out of everything. And they think they can do a better job of how everything's falling apart and they can't figure why. Lord, I thank you for giving us the time where we can come in and still live in a free country where we can come into your house and worship you. Lord, I give you all the glory. Everything that's happened in my life, Lord, you get all the glory. Everything that's happened within this church, all the ministries going, souls being saved. It wasn't us, it was you. Lord, I give you all the glory. Lord, I'm tired of sitting here. I'm tired of being in the mud. I'm tired of... I, some days it just feels like everything's falling apart around me. But Lord, I know that you're wanting to lead. And I have to get off my rear and follow you. I have to get out of that seat and be able to prepare and get ready for where you're sending us. Lord, we all do. Lord, I ask that you work in us in a mighty way. I'll finish this prayer in a moment. As a piano starts playing, we're going to open up our invitation. Maybe you've been here today and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Maybe you're saying, you know, I, I know that my life is a mess and 
Maybe I don't think my life is a mess. Maybe I don't know why I need Him. It's because you're a sinner. And He died on that cross for you. He loves you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to get to know you. He wants you to get to know Him. Maybe you're a Christian here today and say, Brother Moreland, I... That message kind of hit me in a certain place where I've been just not knowing exactly where to where to hit, where to go, what to do. It's time I I quit looking on the past and I start moving forward. Is there anyone like that here today? Then it's it's time to arise. It's time to quit dwelling on the past. Gracious Heavenly Father, again today, thank you. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, there are ones that are out today that are sick. Some are traveling. Lord, I ask you to be with them. Be with our congregation. Be with my church family here today and bless us in a mighty way. Put a hedge around about this church, around the people. Lord, love up on us so we can love up on you. Lord, help us. Show us, guide us, protect us. In Jesus' name, amen. Bob. Let's sing that chorus together. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Amen. That's great. Arise, therefore arise. That's fantastic. It's a good, uh, good reminder here at the end of the year that uh, we have uh, a lot to look forward to in 2016. It's been a great 2015, but uh, God has so much more that he wants to do uh, in each of our lives in uh, this uh, coming year. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, <clears throat> uh, remember... Uh, Pick up your um, uh, offering envelopes down there. If you don't see your name on an offering envelope and you um, need offering envelopes, uh, just write your name down on the sign-up sheet down there, and we'll make sure you get uh, get a number assigned to you and get uh, offering envelopes. Here in the next couple weeks, we will have um, your giving report printed out and uh, set out as well for your uh, tax return. And... Um, uh, please make sure and sign up for the Workers Banquet, the sign-up sheets down there, as well as the uh, New Year's uh, service. Um, fantastic. Uh, let's uh, close with singing, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain cleansed by his blood joined heads with Jesus as we travel this sod for I'm a part of the family the family of God Amen, you're dismissed, we'll see you tonight <laughs>